If you're just beginning a garden, there's some essential things you need in the way of tools. They come in really handy. And what I thought I would do is just walk you through the seven tools that I use in my vegetable garden. Whether it's a large garden or a raised bed, these all come in handy. They even come in handy when you're dealing with containers. So let's start with a shovel. You don't need a huge shovel, but you need one that you can turn the soil in the bed. I like this flat shovel, it's got a nice sharp edge on it. Now to break up the clods and sort of smooth out the bed and the soil, I like to use a fork like this. These are really good to have around. And you can also dig into the soil like you would with the shovel. This is good for lifting up root crops like potatoes, sweet potatoes, or any of those root vegetables. Okay, then a trowel. This is very handy when you're planting those little individual transplants in the spring. You need one of these. And when it comes to water, don't just take a water hose and spray like this. You can blow the plants out of the water. I like to use a wand that has a gentle spray nozzle at the end so you can softly water the plants. It doesn't jar them and it also keeps the soil intact around them. And because it has a long handle, you can reach over into your raised bed quite easily and make sure that all those plants get plenty of moisture. You're also gonna need a pair of good clippers because you wanna prune back some of your plants from time to time. For instance, my basil grows with abandon. These are great to have to cut back. And then for supporting plants, you're gonna need some trellises. And what I like to do is use trellis, but also have some string along. You can use jute or a cotton string like this. And if you don't want to create something like this that I made out of some sticks of cedar, these bamboo sticks are excellent for supporting all kinds of vegetables and herbs you might want to grow. And remember, you don't have to have a shed full of tools to grow lots of herbs and vegetables. Give it a try and have some fun. I can't believe it's already time to start thinking about planting this vegetable garden again. You know, here's a situation where we had such a mild winter, this broccoli has, has come on and, and some of it's even blooming like that. You don't want to eat that, but look at all these little side shoots. So what I've decided to do is just cut off these blooms and we'll keep harvesting side shoots here. There's like a, a whole list of things that we're trying to get done here in the next couple of weeks in this space to start planting. You know, it rained for two days, so just everything's a bog. And then, like this broccoli, see, it's all pretty much spent. But I mean, it's still got some on here. See right here? That's a nice little bud right there. See that? Mmm, that's good stuff. Dog peas on it, but. <laughs> see there, we can still harvest that and have that for supper tonight. So one of the things that I think a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, you got to start early with a vegetable garden. So I feel a little behind. We hadn't gotten our potatoes planted. And what I'm doing here is I've thrown up a row. It's about two feet wide. I'm taking this little Warren hoe and I'm just dragging it along here and trying to cut a furrow through here so I can drop those potatoes in. My other guys are over here working and they're trying to get the winter weeds out you know just because it's winter doesn't mean things don't grow we're just going through stripping out all this winter grass and these little weeds we'll strip all them out and then we'll come back in here with the tiller we'll clean all this dirt out and get rid of it and then we'll come in here and we're going to till the sides then we'll hip it up this is before to after and this is what they'll look like And these are ready to plant. So what else do you do to get, get it ready? We we'll just work this up and just use this organic material. We don't use any, any chemicals or anything. Everything's organic in this garden. So we'll just bring some, what we'll do is we'll get those hipped up and we'll just add some more compost to it. Just work them up, go organic. And then when you plant, you just put a poke hole in the... Depends on what you're planting. If you're planting seeds, it's, you know, it depends. You know, use a little cedar or I got a little push cedar. But you can just load it, it's got a little disc in it. And this back wheel covers it up. The cedar, see? And you can pick these up at any of your local farm stores. We like to rotate the vegetables too, so we try to rotate our different families of vegetables. And you don't want to plant members of the same plant family in the same place year after year. Through this rotation system, you can stay a step ahead of pests 
Since we're organic, we're always looking for ways to, to do this without using any kind of chemicals. Go organic. You know, the other thing is trying to get stuff planted early before the pests show up. Like squash, people wait too late, I think, to plant squash because by the time it gets up and it starts producing blooms, the squash bugs are out and they're all over it, so I try to get my squash planted early too. This is the time of year that we work in compost. We have a big compost heap. We save everything. Go organic. And um, so we amend the soil. Uh, we're adding a lot of lime this time of year because I don't broadcast it over the whole garden because in these areas where we run equipment and we walk, there's no reason to lime it. Go organic. Same, same goes for fertilizer. Okay, now I'm ready to plant these potatoes. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is just walk along and I just step on these potatoes with my heel. Once I get them all dropped in and I step on them, just come along there and then drag the, drag the soil up on them. You want a big mound, that's the main thing. I'm the kind of guy that likes to grow just about anything, but one of the things that I love to grow is a perennial vegetable. Now I grow three different varieties of asparagus here. I grow one called Atlas, which is a great variety. If you're thinking about growing it, think about it. Another one called Purple Passion. When it comes up, the stalks are really purple. They're really gorgeous. And the third one, it's called UC-157. It was developed by the University of California and they just named it 157. Now what I have right here is UC 157 and this is late in winter and what I want to show you is look at the size of the stalks of these guys. Now back in the spring we harvested lots of asparagus here. The tips came up and it's the lovely tender tip that you eat but what you want to do is you want to let this foliage grow up and you want the foliage to persist throughout the entire growing season because this ferny foliage through photosynthesis recharges the roots and gives you those gorgeous, big, juicy stalks that come up in the spring that are so delicious. This time of year, what I like to do is come back before they start shooting and I cut them off at about an inch above the ground, the stalks, just like this. Just come along and take them all off because I want to show you how I've planted them. Let me get some of these out of the way. If you look here, I've created a, a mound that runs 100 feet this direction. And what I did is I planted these asparagus crowns about every two feet apart and I offset them. So when I planted these, I planted two-year-old crowns. And when you order them from a mail order source, which I did, they'll come in a box and they'll look like spiders. And they're, they're two years old and you plant them. The first year, I didn't harvest anything. They put up this ferny foliage, I left it all over. The second year, I harvested about 25% of the stalks that came up. And then in the third year, I harvested a lot. And since we're organic here, what I like to do in the way of feeding these plants is I take some of our animal manure, and what I do is I just dump it out in certain places like that. I know that doesn't look very appetizing, and I spread it around evenly around the crowns like this. And what will happen is as the winter rains continue, this manure will dissolve, and all of those nutrients and micronutrients will settle in around the asparagus, and in a couple of months, we'll start seeing those lovely little shoots come out. When we talk about spring planting, one of the first things I do is get the soil ready in my raised beds for all of those beautiful vegetables and flowers.
I'm back here on the other side of these ornamental grasses. I can't tell you how much I love these. And here we are at the end of, well, the dormant period, the end of winter. And just look how beautiful they are. I just love their wispy vertical look and that wheat and color is so gorgeous in the winter landscape. I'll tell you the other reason I love these things is that they are easy to grow. And when you've got a garden that's this big, you need some bold statements. You need things that are gonna really fill in that require no maintenance at all. And that's exactly what this big drift of miscanthus grass does. You see, I think the best way to use them is to take one variety, and there are lots of different kinds of ornamental grasses, but these uh, miscanthus grasses, or maiden grasses as they're often called, they're an oriental type. And what I like to do is take one variety and do a big drift like this of maybe 10 or 12. Uh, if you have a smaller garden, three or five, they can really make a strong statement and offer textural contrast in the garden. Now, what I'm doing this time of year, it's time to cut them back because what you don't want is the new growth coming up through all of this dead foliage that turned brown after our first frost. Now, one thing I do want to point out, these are the flower plumes, if you will, or the inflorescence of the grass, which are so beautiful and can be used in dried arrangements if they're collected early in the fall before they begin to shed. And you can just spray them with some hairspray and all of this will hold and it will not fly off. And you don't have to worry about with miscanthus these being invasive. The seed are sterile, so I'm not gonna have them coming up all through my roses and shrubs here. So let me just give you a tip on the best ways to cut them back. It's really simple. You just need a good pair of sharp pruners. And what I like to do is take just some twine. I keep this garden twine around. What I like to do is come up about, oh, uh, 10 inches on the plant, draw it up as tightly as you can. Sometimes I'll do a double loop like this and then just take it, cut off the end. Then you can take your sharp pruners and just go in there and just cut it off. And you're gonna cut this grass off at about six to eight inches high, like that. And then when you bring it up, your twine's all around it, it remains in a bundle. Cleanup is a snap.